So far, we have been living in a perfect world. Our DNA replication is perfect. In case there's a mistake, we have a robust machinery that can look at DNA and if there are any mistakes made during DNA replication process, they are corrected. Transcription, translation, they're all working perfectly. Cells signaling is working perfectly. Cells are coordinating their efforts in unison for the overall benefit of their host. Our immune system is running around our bodies, neutralizing any potential threats. However, we all know life isn't perfect. Things do go wrong. And today we are going to see what happens when some of those things go wrong and cause uncontrolled cell division. And other name for this uncontrolled cell division is also cancer. So today we are going to see how cancers form and what is the molecular, what are the molecular and cellular uh, basis of the formation of cancer. First of all, I would like to introduce you uh, to special class of genes, proto-onc genes. Proto-onc genes are actually normal genes that become onc gene either after a mutation or increased expression. Onc gene basically is a gene which has a product which can cause cancerous changes in the cell. Proto-onc means before an onc gene becomes an onc gene, it is called proto-onc genes. These genes perform normal functions. When they're normal, their gene product is normal. They're performing normal and essential functions for cells, as you will see. However, if there's a change in one of these genes, proto-onc genes, which causes it to become an onc gene, it will result in cancer. Proto-onc genes generally code for proteins that help regulate cell growth and differentiation. Well, that makes sense. Proto-onc genes are often involved in signal transduction, execution of mitogenic signals, usually through their protein products. Upon activation, a proto-onc gene or its product becomes a tumor-inducing agent, which is also referred to as onc gene. Some onc genes usually are involved in early stages of cancer development, increasing the chance that a normal cell develops into a tumor cell, possibly resulting in cancer. We are going to talk about four classes of onc genes or proto-onc genes. Growth-promoting onc genes, genes that their products, they cause cells to grow or divide or multiply. Growth-inhibiting cancer suppressor genes, the name is explicit on its own. DNA repairing genes, genes that function in DNA repairing. So if there is a DNA damage and our DNA repairing genes are not able to perform their function, it can also result in cancer. The changes that occur in DNA will be sustained. Apoptosis genes, genes which are sensing whether the cell is performing normally or not. These genes, if they see that cells are not performing normally, they cause cells to go through apoptosis or cell suicide. So let's look at the neoplastic transformation process. Neoplasia means development of cancer. Here we have a normal cell. This normal cell, for example, gets damaged with, due to chemicals, radiations or viruses. Our cellular machinery, if it does its job properly, it should be able to repair DNA and the damaged DNA becomes normal and cell will go on living, performing its regular duties. However, if it is, there is a failure of DNA repair, mutations in non-sexual cells of our bodies, they can accumulate and cause cancer. And if these mutations occur in the cells that result in formation of gametes, these mutations can be passed on to the next generation, as we have already seen when we were talking about clinical genetics or genetics. So what happens, what type of genes can be damaged, which can result in cancer? Here we have mentioned activation of growth promoting onc genes, alterations in genes that, that regulate apoptosis, inactivation of cancer suppressor genes, mutations 
that affect DNA repair, repairing system. These are the four categories that we have already talked about. So with these kind of mutations, what happens if their altered gene products accumulate, they can result in clonal expansion, which basically means that one cell will keep on dividing and making clones of itself, identical copies of itself. And when there are excess of these cells, these cells can, over the course of time, accumulate other mutations, resulting in ability of these cells to migrate and invade other tissues, which is called metastasism. So ultimately, the accumulation of these changes can result in malignant neoplasm or a cancer. Cancer formation is not that easy. Cancer cells have to face many challenges to survive and become viable and, uh, and build their ability to grow and form cancer is limited by many factors. So let's look at the challenges that cancer cells have to overcome. First of all, they have to have self-sufficiency in growth signals. So cancer cells should be able to divide with the, in the absence of signaling molecules that tell cells to divide. They have to become insensitive to anti-growth signals. They should have ability to metastasize and invade other, other tissues to propagate. They should have limitless replicative potential. Basically, we have talked about the telomeres in our DNA. They shorten every time cell divides. So these cells have to develop mechanisms that will allow them to divide millions of times without the telomeres shortening. This basically also requires these cells to produce molecules that will allow blood vessels to grow in their direction, bringing in the food and nutrition they need to grow. And of course, these cells have to evade apoptosis, programmed cell death, because every time a cell has, there's a change in cell, there are special gene products that are sensing changes in the cell. And if the cell has changed, these products basically cause cells to go through apoptosis, programmed cell death or suicide. So these are some of the challenges a newly formed neoplasm or cancerous tissue has to overcome in order to be viable and cause disease.